the method book dated 1885 from Switzerland, written by Albert Roth, called the complete method for xylophone, Methode complete de xylophone. This is the cover of that method by Roth in 1885. So here we have a portrait of Albert Roth at the xylophone from 1885. And we can see that the instrument he's playing is a four row continental style xylophone of high quality and that it's finished. It's a very clear design, clear lines on the instrument. It even has a tripod table. So perhaps this is a seal instrument, uh, 1885. We know that Seals Company began manufacturing xylophones like this in 1881. So it could be a seal instrument, we have no proof of that, but this is Albert Roth at the concert xylophone in 1885. Here are two diagrams from the Roth method book. The instrument on the left is the four row continental xylophone or the European xylophone. The keyboard on the right is the two row piano style xylophone. It's interesting that this is 1885 and the two row xylophone is already clearly laid out here, at least in diagram form. Now we don't have much evidence of the two row xylophone being in use in Europe in the 1880s. The earliest examples we've seen that are more or less commonplace are from England in the 19 aughts, the first decade of the 1900s. But here in 1885 in Switzerland, at least the instrument was known and is diagrammed here on paper. It's interesting that we have the name of a xylophonist on the left hand diagram with the four row instrument. And the name of that xylophonist is Fotish. Fotish. So it says detail du xylophone system Fotish. So it's basically crediting a musician who we don't know anything about by the name of Fotish with representing the four row European xylophone layout. On the right hand diagram of the two row layout, that is credited to Albert Roth, the author of this method book. So it says detail du xylophone system, Albert Roth, and that's crediting Roth. So perhaps, perhaps Roth was the first person in history to lay out the European xylophone in two row piano keyboard layout. And the year of this diagram is 1885. So even if Roth is not in fact the first person to do this, we know that the two row xylophone keyboard layout was in use at least as early as 1885 in Switzerland. This is the back cover of the Roth method book from 1885. It's a catalog of music for xylophone, music for xylophone, and it shows several different categories of xylophone music. Xylophone with orchestra, xylophone with harmony, xylophone accompanied with various instruments. And if you can see the detail, the entire back cover is literally covered with titles of xylophone music that apparently were in print as early as 1885. Very little of this sheet music seems to have survived to today, so we don't really have uh, detailed documentation about these compositions, but because of this list that was used basically as an advertisement on the back of a method book, we can see that the library genre or library opus for xylophone music in Switzerland in 1885 already was quite extensive. Here we have a method book for the xylophone from America in the year 1887, Ryan's Xylophone Instructor. Now this instructor by Ryan was part of a larger series that this person published. It was method books in this series for many different instruments. So basically they were trying to cover all the bases of instruments that Americans might be learning at that time in 1887. So Ryan was more than likely not a xylophonist or a professional xylophone performer or composer, but he was just including the xylophone as one of the popular instruments that should be in his series for all American popular instruments. So although this is not a true xylophonist work, it's still interesting to note that the xylophone in America in 1887 was popular enough that an all encompassing instrumental series did include the xylophone. So that does give us an indication of the common or popular acceptance of the xylophone in America in 1887. This is the first page of the Ryan's true instructor for the xylophone. And I'm going to read for you here. 
containing a full course in the elements of music, a clear and concise method for the xylophone, and a varied selection of popular melodies, marches, jigs, reels, dances, and other instrumental music, all carefully arranged for the xylophone. So it's good to know that Ryan not only arranged this music for the xylophone, he did so carefully. Uh, but one thing we do notice from the list of music types, that this is all popular music, so that was basically the use of the xylophone in America in 1887. Uh, it was becoming apparently more commonplace, and it was mostly for popular music. This is the illustration in Ryan's True Xylophone Instructor of the xylophone that that person, Ryan, had in mind. So what we see here is a simple tabletop diatonic xylophone resting on belts of straw and pitched in the key of F again. So the xylophone at that time was still a diatonic instrument and it still was used on the tabletop with straw belts supporting the xylophone bars. Continuing our examination of these method books for marimba and xylophone chronologically brings us to the year 1890 in Leipzig, Germany. This is the self-instructor for the xylophone written and published by Otto Seal in Leipzig. We see a portrait of Otto Seal on the cover at a Continental 4 xylophone because he began his company in 1881 and this is 1890. Undoubtedly, the xylophone that Seal is posing with would have been manufactured by his own factory. One of the early pages in the SEAL instructor for xylophone is the preface, and it's interesting to see here that the preface is listed in three different languages, German, English, and Russian. So the fact that it's in Russian as well as English and German is a little bit surprising, but maybe indicates that the xylophone was still popular in the part of Eastern Europe that gave rise to the xylophone in the early part of the 1800s. So we may surmise from this Russian preface that the xylophone was still in use in Eastern Europe, maybe commonplace, but at least definitely still active there, even though it had now migrated to Western Europe and America. Here is a page from the Otto Seal Xylophone School, and Seal is now talking about his own career as a solo xylophonist. And we see from his sort of biography here, or his little promo about his career, that he traveled extensively throughout Europe, performing in many different countries and large cities as a solo xylophone virtuoso. The next page in the SEAL xylophone method talks about the types of xylophones. He talks about the xylophone with four rows and also the xylophone with two rows. So apparently Seal was aware of the fact that a two-row xylophone was already in use. Although we don't see Seal using that instrument personally at this time, but he was at least aware of it. Here Seal shows a diagram of a two-row layout of the xylophone in piano style layout. So not only was he aware of the existence of the two-row xylophone, he's illustrating it here. So that does indicate that perhaps the two-row xylophone was becoming more common in use in the 1890s. On the following page in the SEAL method, he shows the standard four-row European layout of the instrument. In his diagram of the instrument, he lists the xylophone as having 34 tones or 34 bars. This method book dates to 1910. It was published in both America and England by Paul DeVille, The Universal Method for the Xylophone. And according to the cover, it claims to be the largest and most complete method ever written for the xylophone, at least in 1910, if that claim is true. Here in the DeVille method, we see two types of xylophones, and this is the first instance in a xylophone method that we see a xylophone with resonators. Clearly, what we see in the bottom instrument pictured here is a Deegan instrument. We can tell it's a Deegan instrument by the A-frame design of the stand, and also by the fact that historically we know that Deegan was one of the very first companies in the world 
to use metal resonators on a xylophone about 1908. And this is a method book in 1910 depicting what is clearly a Deegan instrument with resonators. Above that Deegan instrument in the diagram is a tabletop instrument in a case. So that would have been more of an old style European or even English design, which is a chromatic instrument with two rows like a piano, but the xylophone bars in that case are resting on felt. And that instrument would be played with wooden hammers, which are pictured in the case with the xylophone. This page of the DeVille method shows the styles of xylophones used in Europe. And as we've seen in a couple other method books from Europe at that time, he's depicting two layouts for the xylophone keyboard. On the left, we see the two row piano style keyboard. And on the right, we see the four row continental style xylophone layout. Below the diagrams is a selected list of compositions for xylophone and piano that are included in this method book. So these selections are actually available in this method and unlike some of the earlier methods that listed titles but we don't have the music for those selections, these compositions for the xylophone and piano are published in this method book.